In this lesson, we're going to take a closer look at p-values. So again, the p-value is the probability of finding our observed result, which is our sample. It's the probability that we find our sample or a result even more extreme given that the null hypothesis is actually true. So again, if our p-value is very small, like the 1% we just talked about, then either our null hypothesis is not true or we had a really crazy sample. So essentially we would be saying that if p is small, we have evidence to suggest that this is not true and that the alternative hypothesis is likely true. If the p-value is very large, then we're not surprised by our result. If I can expect that result 95% of the time, I'm not surprised by it. It likely occurred just from natural sampling variability, meaning I didn't get the exact answer that was the hypothesized value, but I got really stinking close. And therefore, I have evidence to say that this is correct, but I don't have enough evidence to say it's false, but I can't say it's true. I just say I don't reject it because I don't have enough to say it's false. So again, what should we be comparing our p-value against? It depends on the context. Generally, we use 0.05, and that is called our alpha level. And so our alpha level is typically 0.05 unless they tell you otherwise. However, it totally depends on the context of the situation. If our results are super important, say we're testing a medication or something, or a rivet that holds the wings of a commercial aircraft together, if we screw up, there's some serious um, repercussions of that. And so we might use an alpha level that's very, very small, like 1%, because we want to be pretty darn sure of our results. If it's not as important, like, hey, did the number of uh, proportion of students with full-time job increased? Well, I don't really care as much. There's, the results aren't as precise, and so I might use an alpha level of 10%. So it all is context-based. So in our engineering example that we just did in our last video, we found a p-value of 0 0.067, and that is higher than the alpha level of 0 0.05. Because p our p-value is greater than alpha, then we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So essentially that means, in context, that we fail to reject the true crack rate is 20%. We're basically saying the true crack rate probably is 20%. But really what we're saying is we don't have the evidence to say that it's below 20%. And again, below comes from the alternative hypothesis. Again, I can show you this also using a critical value. This was a lower tailed test, lower because we were dealing with less than or equal to. Our z-score was negative 1.5, which is about right here, maybe a little bit to the left. And notice negative 1.5 falls within the acceptable region. So all of this is okay region. Um, and how did I test that? Well, I was looking at a 0.05 alpha level, all to the left. So I can see that anything in the red would cause us to reject the null, and I'm okay because I'm within this value. How do I know for sure I'm within that value? Because it tells me that this value is negative 1.645, and I'm to the right of it. Now, let's say we still are using our 0.067 that we found for our last example. What if I'm comparing it to 10% now? Well, if I'm comparing it to 10%, then P is actually less than alpha. And if P is less than alpha, then I have to reject the null. I'm saying in context, that means I reject that the true crack rate is 20%. There is evidence to suggest that the crack rate is below 20%. And again, all based on the fact that I'm choosing a different alpha. Again, I can look at that using critical values. If I change alpha here to 10%, and again, lower tailed to the left, notice 1.5 would be somewhere here in the region that is not okay. So I would have to reject the null. 